I uh, worked at Facebook um, and was a, one of the initial members on the React Native Android team. So I know quite a bit about React Native, and today I'm going to talk about uh, gesture system in React Native. Um, so a couple months ago, I started working on a project that was aiming to replace the current gesture system. I think it's a cool project, so, so I'd like to talk a bit um, more about what type of problem it solves and why it's important to seek a new solution for the gesture system and React Native. Um, so we will start by um, learning a bit about the current status, so how, the, how currently we can handle gestures in JavaScript and React Native. Um, then I'm going to talk a bit about uh, native components that also might have their native gesture recognizers, um, and also talk a bit about the te techniques that we can uh, use to utilize uh, uh, those gesture recognizers. Uh, then I'm going to um, describe the problems related to the current uh, gesture system in React Native, and finally we'll talk about solutions. So we start off uh, with basic touchable components. In React Native we have four main types of touchables. Uh, so these are, um, uh, they differ by the way they display uh, feedback, um, but have a common interface as far as handling touch events. So the main element of that interface is the unpress handler that fires whenever user presses the button, and we can use that to like run some logic based on that. Um, so um, the touchable highlight can be used for views that have a visible bounce on the screen, in which case the component highlights when we, when we tap on it. Um, touchable opacity can be used for uh, like text-only buttons or icon-only buttons when we don't have a background to highlight, in which case we change the opacity. The touchable without feedback can be used for all the other cases where we don't want to have like a standard way of uh, interacting with the touch. So for example here, uh, we, ha we use the touchable without feedback because we want to change the view that is just a plain text view into a um, uh, input text and that gets selected and contains the full URL. Uh, and finally, the touchable native feedback can be used only on Android and provides the ripple uh, effect can be used both for components with visible bounds and for uh, un, uh, un, unbounded components without, without borders, um, as an example here. Um, so touchables uh, under the hood are implemented on top of a, a JS responder system, and JS responder system allows us from the JavaScript perspective to analyze the whole stream of a row touch events. Uh, so that will be touch events uh, like touch uh, when we put the finger down, when we move it around the screen, and when we lift it up. Um, so implementing touchable on top of that isn't just doesn't just boil down to like listening for the app event, because like when we put the finger down and we are on the on the button, and then when we move it so that we go out of the button and release it, we don't want the unpress uh, event to ha uh, to fire. Um, so let's so so we can we can implement that complex interactions just in JavaScript using uh, this API, JS Responder system. Uh, so let's take a look how it works. Um, so we start with a, a touch screen uh, that delivers touch events uh, that are first processed by the underlying operating system. And from the, uh, from the native app perspective, we are getting a stream of events like down, move, or up. Um, and this gets delivered first to the main thread of our native side of the application, which is called the UI thread. Um, so now we're going to be focusing on the JavaScript uh, gesture system. So uh, I, I will skip the part where uh, the events are processed in uh, the UI thread. Uh, the important bit is that they somehow get delivered to the JavaScript. So they're sort of passed, uh, but not directly um, to the JavaScript thread. And in JavaScript thread, we have access to the whole React tree hierarchy. Um, so we can uh, tell which components should be responsible for handling um, a given touch stream. So let's say that's, that's this one. Um, and also, this responder system um, has a way for the components to negotiate on which component should be responsible for handling the touch. So they can, they can steal uh, the responder lock, that's how it's called. Uh, and it's, it's a very common pattern that, like for example, a parent component may want at some point uh, to tell hey, uh, I, want, I want to actually handle this touch event, that is just cancel. Uh, so that's, what, uh, that's a frequent case that like, the parent can steal uh, your touch uh, stream. Um, so the API um, is pretty simple. Um, 
virtually any component can be uh, can implement this API. So it it's just a matter of implementing a few um, handlers. So in order to become a responder, we implement one of those two methods or both if we need them. Uh, so the start method is called when we have the down event, and the move method is is called when we have the touch move event. So we can either decide at the very beginning of the gesture that we want to handle it, or we we may also like wait for a bit. For example, when we implement a drag gesture, so we may want it to wait until you uh, drag the finger far enough in order to activate. Um, so when we return true from that handler, it doesn't mean that we're going to be uh, granted the rights for handling the touch stream because the JS responder system also have other components that may negotiate and may also fight for getting the responder lock. Um, so, so we are going to be notified by the JS responder system once it figures out who should be responsible for that by calling one of those two handlers, uh, depending on success or failure of our request. Um, and finally, in order to process the events, uh, we implement on responder move, uh, which is called uh, with all the move events and the responder release, which is called with the app uh, touch up event. Um, so there are a few other um, elements in the API. They're all documented in the React Native core documentation. Uh, if you are interested, I recommend you check out the link below. Um, and one last important part of the gesture system in JavaScript I'd like to talk about is called pan responder. Um, so pan responder. Um, uh, it's a very similar API to the JS responder. It's actually built on top of that API. Um, and the difference is that, uh, like all the methods from the JS responder, you just replace a responder with word pan, and you get the interface of the pan responder. But there is also another difference. Uh, instead of uh, just getting a row events like the JS responder does, pan responder also gets a, a state object, which is called the gesture state object. And the gesture state object contains information about the accumulated distance of the gesture. So for example, how far have we already dragged the finger from the starting point of the gesture? And for example, also about the velocity of, uh, uh, of, your, of the movements. Uh, so pan responder is commonly used by a, a lot of different open source libraries, including all the uh, navigators, almost all the navigators library that use pan responder for uh, handling the swiping between uh, screens on the navigator stack. Um, so, so far we, only talked about um, handling touch in JavaScript. Um, but in React Native, we also have native components. So we can render pure native components. And some of them also uh, have their own native gesture recognizers. So one example is the switch component that not only handles a tap event, but can also handle swiping. So we can swipe uh, through the switch component in order to flip the state. Um, so there are a couple of other components like that. So for example, drawer. Um, slider, um, but I, I'd like to focus now on a most notable example, which is a scroll view. So scroll view is a very sophisticated component. It not only uh, recognizes a drag event, flink event, or pinch, but it also provides a very nice um, visual interaction to those uh, those gestures, especially on iOS, where we, ha we have all the bounciness effects. Um, so while talking about the scroll view, I'd like to um, t tell you a bit about like some techniques that we can um, use to utilize the fact that we uh, have a very sophisticated uh, gesture recognizer implemented for us and we can use it for free. Um, so let's start with this simple example. Uh, it's like a Twitter profile page app where we have an image that uh, when we scroll up, it, it sticks when it's at the height of the, um, of the nav bar. And it also scrolls down when we do the over scroll. So it scrolls in a way, it, it scales up when we over scroll. So it scales up in a way that when it's on the, the top edge of the image stays at the top of the screen and the rest, the bottom edge of the image scrolls along with the content. Uh, so in order, in order to implement that, uh, we don't need to deal with uh, like drag events or flink events. We just use the scroll view and the on scroll event it provides, an on scroll handler. Um, so to implement this, uh, we're going to have a scroll view uh, with an image view in it. And the image view is rendered in a way so that, it's, so that the rest of the content in the scroll view is rendered li like below the image so that when, it, when we scroll, it can go like it can hide be behind the, uh, the image view. Um, and now we are going to use the on scroll event and we're going to up, uh, be updating the translate y uh, of the image and the scale. 
Um, so for that, we're actually going to use the animated library, which is one of the um, most popular uh, libraries uh, that are part of the na React Native core. Um, so I'm sorry for those unfamiliar with the animated API, but I hope the uh, examples are simple enough for everyone to understand. Um, so let's imagine that we have an animated value that represents the y offset of the scroll view. Um, so then uh, we're first going to calculate how the translate y property is going to look like. So first, when we scroll up to the point where we are at the navbar height, nothing really happens because this, the image scrolls along with the rest of the content. So we want the translate uh, y to remain the same for that uh, distance. So if the input uh, range is between zero and the image height na minus navbar height, uh, we want the output to be the same. So now when we scroll further, uh, we want the, for every pixel farther we scroll, we want the offset to like scroll the same distance. So now when it scrolls by a navbar height, we want also the, uh, the translate to reflect that. So it's sort of tr translate in the opposite direction and the same on the same amount. Um, so we do something similar with the scale, uh, but then we are uh, dealing with the over scroll, which is negative. Uh, so when we scroll by the size of the image, we want the scale to change by uh, the factor of two. And then when we are at a stationary point at zero, we want the scale to be back at uh, the original scale, which is one. And then when we scroll in the regular direction, we want it to remain at one. Um, so unfortunately, the scale transform scales uh, from the center of the image, so it uniformly scales in each direction. So we also need to reflect that in the translate y um, transform. So, so here I added a first argument to the input and output range. Uh, and it means that for every two pixels we scroll in over scroll, we actually want only one pixel to scroll, uh, to translate, because the other pixel is sort of, uh, uh, we get it by scaling the image. Um, so finally, so this example is implemented and I put it on, on GIS, uh, on GitHub. Um, so later I'm gonna be posting my um, slides on Twitter. So you, if you'd like to see the whole full working example, then just check out my slides later. Um, the link is on the left side. Um, so we use the values then to calculate uh, the styles object for the image. And for in the styles, we are going to have the transform uh, and first apply the translate y and then the scale. Uh, on top of that, we are going to create a scroll handler and for that, we are using animated.event, which maps the content offset.y property of the native animated event into the y offset animated value. Um, and finally, in the render method, we have the animated scroll view with the on-scroll handler set and the animated header, uh, animated header uh, styles with, uh, uh, sorry, the, the image with the headers, uh, with the animated header styles. Uh, what's important here is that we are uh, enabling this property. Use native driver means that uh, we can now take the whole, um, uh, we, uh, so use native driver lets, uh, lets the animated library to move the whole logic about how values are updated to the UI thread and run it, run it there instead of like bouncing between the JavaScript thread only so that JavaScript thread can calculate the uh, translate and scale properties. Um, so recently, I've been challenged to implement this nice uh, component like in the iOS Maps app. So this is actually the iOS Maps app. And we have this drawer with a scroll view in it. And the scroll view works in a way that if we like reach the end of the scroll view, we also start like pulling down the drawer. Uh, so one could tell that we can use pan responder maybe for implementing the drawer. Uh, but then it's not possible for the pan responder to communicate with the scroll view so that it can pass the, the touch stream from, from the pan responder, which is in, in JavaScript, to the scroll view, which runs in native. So let's see what scroll view has uh, to offer. So scroll view has this nice uh, feature, which is called a sticky header. And this is a contacts app, and the sticky headers are just the cells inside a scroll view that became sticky when you uh, scroll past them. Um, so, so the sticky header can be any view. So let's say that this is the sticky header we implemented, the, the first view on the top. Uh, let's make the scroll view a little bit shorter so that we can see what's behind it. Oh, there is map behind it, right? Nice. Uh, so I think you already know what I'm going for. We're going to add a transparent cell on top as the first element in the scroll view, like this. And then we almost uh, got what we wanted. So we have 
uh, almost the same interaction as on the maps. There are just a few tweaks that needs to be done. Uh, and without any work, almost, we got uh, this very complex interaction. Um, so we talked about the scroll view as one of the examples of components that have their own native gesture recognizer. Unlike m most of the other native component that, does that, uh, does that too, like for example, uh, slider or switch component, it can also act as a container. And as a result, uh, we can have a component that uses JS responder uh, system to be embedded within a component that uses a native gesture handler. So this is the example here. So we have a scroll view with a button in it. So the button uses the JS responder, whereas the scroll view uses the native recognizer. Um, so let's just imagine that the gesture recognizer of a scroll view is a black box that takes a stream of events. And then at some point, it says, yeah, I recognize the event. And from now on, I'm going to use that stream to animate the uh, scroll view content. And we can say the same about the, the touchable, right, if, about the button. So it's also a black box that accepts a stream of events. And at some point, when we lift the finger up, it recognizes and, and it fires the unpress event. Um, so if we have a touchable that is inside of the scroll view now, uh, we actually have two black boxes. And those two black boxes react for the same uh, gesture stream. Uh, and apparently, they run in a two different threads that runs in parallel. Um, so the problem here is that in some cases, um, it may make the whole gesture recognition process unpredictable because we don't know which will fire first. Uh, so luckily, um, luckily though, um, the most frequent, uh, frequent case of a button in scroll view doesn't suffer from this issue uh, because uh, the scroll view and, uh, and the button react for a different type of a uh, event. So the button reacts for the up event, whereas scroll view reacts for the move event. So when scroll view detects the movement, uh, since it gets the event first, it can recognize and then cancel the, the JavaScript thread recognizer because the up event is always after the move event. This is not the case for the gestures uh, that use the same type of uh, event. So for example, when we have a um, when we have a pan responder inside of the scroll view or when we have a long press uh, button inside of the scroll view. So in some cases, we may end up having this, that, um, that the both uh, recognizers will fire at the same time. So this is the first problem, that the gesture recognition logic is distributed between threads that runs in parallel. Um, so we already learned that uh, when, we, uh, when we had the JS recognizer system, we could uh, negotiate like which component is responsible for handling the touch stream. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the case um, for uh, when we have the native uh, gesture recognizer. So we don't have that much control over which uh, gesture recognizer uh, will handle uh, the event. So this is a simple example on Android this time where we have a drawer and have a slider component in it. Um, so let's say we have this drawer and slider. So now when we tap on the slider, we can move it around uh, and that's fine. But when we try to pan it this way, then instead of the slider, the drawer start recognizing the close animation, uh, the close gesture, which is undesirable because we would like for the sli slider to be responsible for that when it's within the bounds of the slider. Another example is when we have a, a view pager and we have a drawer on the last page. So we open the drawer and now when we try to like pull it back, then instead of pulling back the drawer, we're starting swiping between the pages. Um, so we can close it now. And it's also not possible to pull the drawer in because the view pager will also capture this event. Um, so let's now try a different thing. So when we put a drawer inside of the view pager, what if we put a view pager inside of the drawer? Um, so what happens here, yeah, it works. We can pull the drawer in, we can pull it back. Everything seems to work, um, really cool. But what if we switch from the first page? Yeah, so when we now drag from the edge, we see the drawer, and we, went, we didn't want it that, so that's undesirable because we wanted the uh, drawer to only be on the second page. So that's the problem number two, is that there is no API that would allow for defining interaction between the uh, native gesture recognizers. Um, and the last problem I'd like to talk about is related to uh, the gesture-driven animation. So you might remember this example here, where we've been using native driver. So here I'm en enabling the... Um, the perf monitor, and you can see it on the left top corner. 
that the, uh, the UI thread runs at 60 FPS, whereas JS thread only runs at 17. So we put some fake load on a JavaScript thread here. Um, so as you can see, the interaction is very smooth uh, because we use the native driver. So the whole animation runs on the UI thread, which runs at 60 FPS. Um, so what happens if we now comment this out? Um, so as you can see now, the interaction isn't very smooth. It's just very junky, actually. Um, so what happens here is, like for every single scroll event, we need to cross the boundary of the bridge, go to JavaScript thread so that the JavaScript thread can calculate the update uh, for the, um, the scale and the translation. And then we are going back to UI thread to reflect that on the UI. And the thing is that uh, since we've been running only 17 uh, loops, JavaScript loops per second, we, we could only see uh, what we just saw. Uh, another example was with a pan responder, so I'm not going to uh, go into details about this implementation here now. Um, but uh, we, we have here a simple pan responder example, a view that we can move around, move around the screen. Uh, we are also using animated event here, but notice that we haven't uh, enabled the use native driver property. Um, so here's the rest of the code. Um, and yeah, so, so now the JS runs at 60 FPS and the interaction is very smooth. So what happens if we put some load on the JavaScript thread? So now the JavaScript thread runs, runs about 20 frames per second. Uh, and as you can imagine, the interaction is very janky. Um, so you tell me that, yeah, let's enable the native driver, right? Uh, but the, the third problem is actually that we can't. And the reason why we can't is because the pen responder is a JavaScript only concept. So it has this gesture state, which needs to be calculated on a JavaScript side, which means that we need to cross that boundary each time uh, we have a touch move event in order to correctly calculate the position of the, of the element. So this is the problem number three. Touch events recognized, uh, recognized by JS responder system cannot be connected with native animated uh, nodes. Um, so I talked about the problem. Let's talk about solutions. Uh, so one um, solution is, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with, it's called the uh, React Native Interactable. Uh, so this solves some of the issues I've been talking about uh, today. Um, uh, it's made by Wix, has been released uh, just over a month ago. Tal was presenting just before my talk. Um, so uh, it's on top of, uh, on top of like, solving some of the problems I mentioned today, it also gives a very nice and easy to use API for defining very complex um, Spring-based uh, uh, visual interactions. Uh, so if you, haven't, if you haven't already, I recommend you guys check it out. Um, and for the rest of the presentation, I'd like to focus on the project I've been working on. Uh, it's called React Native Gesture Handler, um, and it's aiming to replace the uh, gesture system of React Native. Um, so let's see how it works. Uh, so it defines a few new components, uh, one component for each of the gestures, um, type of gesture, so one for tab, for pan, for long press. And there is also this native view gesture handler, which is essentially a wrapper around native uh, views that have native gesture recognizers. Uh, so each of those handlers uh, runs as an independent state machine. Uh, so it, while recognizing the events, it can go uh, between having different states. So there are six different states, uh, which most important state, with most important states being the active state, which means something similar to being a JavaScript responder. Uh, we can compare it to that. Um, and finally, um, we can uh, react to, uh, from the JavaScript perspective, we can react to the state changes and also have a handler uh, that will react to the stream of the events. Um, so today I've uh, released an update for the library that since now also supports the native uh, animated event for, uh, for that event. So it makes it possible to uh, to run smooth animations using the, for example, the pan gesture handler, and not only. Um, okay, uh, so one very important problem uh, that the library solves is the communication and or interaction between gesture recognizers. Um, so to describe why is it important, uh, let's consider this example here. So let's think of how the single tap uh, recognizer could work. So this is the time uh, timeline uh, and we have some stream of events. So there is a down, move, 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 up. So we're not, never, you're, you're never going to be that fast to only generate that down and up event. There are al always going to, to be some move events within. So there's this stream of event, and it's, let's say it's, it's very quick. Um, so 
uh, we are a single tap recognizer, we recognize after we see the app event. So let's not now consider the double tap. Um, so we see the same thing, but we cannot yet recognize because we need the second tap. Um, so there is some time period uh, we expect the second tap to happen. So let's say that it happened here, and then we can recognize. So we have double tap. Um, so what now if we actually have both single tap and double tap handlers set for the same view? So now when we see the first uh, stream of gestures, we cannot immediately recognize uh, on a single tap because it could also be the double tap. So we need to wait for some period until we don't see anything. And if, it, if, if nothing happens, then we actually can fire the single tap event. Um, so React Native, um, React Native Gesture Handler supports an asynchronous recognition. Uh, so the state machine gets the stream of the events and can make the decision based on, uh, based on that. But uh, that decision doesn't have to be immediately reflected in the system. Uh, so which allows us to delay, uh, delay the decision to the point in time when we have enough knowledge about the rest of the system. Because in this example, like if we, if we didn't have the double tab handler set, then we don't want like, to delay this recognition up to the point where we, uh, up to this, this uh, orange place in the time. Um, so here are the properties you can use with the gesture handlers in order to, um, um, in order to set, uh, in order to control the communication and interaction between the gesture handlers. Uh, I put also the hit sub property, which I think is really cool. It allows you to extend the area of a touch element without actually changing its size. Uh, so it actually works also for a native element such as scroll view or slider. So you can extend the slider area with this, or you can like scroll next to the scroll view, uh, and, and also this will interact with the scroll view. So it's really cool. Um, this is how uh, how it looks uh, in the render method. As you can see, you can also nest the uh, gesture handlers, and some of the gesture handlers also have their own specific properties, like for example, the long press um, have the, the duration that you need to put a finger down, um, and like the pan responder has a delta that you need to uh, drag in order to activate. Um, and that's it. Uh, so this is the example of pan responder running with the JS perf monitor, and the JS FPS is at six, and we have a smooth uh, interaction. So that's everything I have for today. Thank you.